Hey, real quick, guys, CoreCast is going to be a standard podcast that will be uploaded to iTunes. However, before we can do that, we need to have three shows in our feed. Until then, I'll upload them here. I just wanted to warn you guys that this isn't a video. This is two dudes talking about Core. Prepare yourself. Proceed to your reward. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of CoreCast, the show where we talk nothing but Meta Buff and Core. I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me is Nato Christo from Twitch. Nato, how you doing, brother? I am doing wonderful. Mongoose and Nato Christo in one podcast. Is this a crossover stream, Mongoose? Teaming up, teaming up. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So what we're going to be talking about today are some of the news and updates, and then uh, Nato has been collecting up suggestions from you guys on his stream. We're going to go over some of those and talk about what we like and what we dislike about him. How about we just drive straight on into the news? What news do we got for Metabuff and Core? I know there's a lot of it, Nato. Yeah, so there were some pretty big uh, developments over the past uh, couple weeks. Um, the alpha that was supposed to come on the 27th, I believe, um, is actually has been pushed back. Uh, with no real release date at the moment. Um, so, you know, as unfortunate that as that is, you know, there's a very long uh, post that Opolis made. And, you know, it, it's I feel like although it's being pushed back, we are in the right hands. Um, you know, just like uh, Opolis mentioned in there from that quote, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, a, a bad game that's pushed out is always bad, but a good game that's delayed is always good. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. um, that was a quote <laughs> from Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, it it does feel like you know they have their priorities right. Um, you know, they knew that they weren't going to meet their deadline. They didn't want to give us a bad product. And um, I, you know, I, one thing I've been saying to people on my stream is, you know, just the uh, the game uh, build that you and Brick uh, Britic ended up playing before we did. Uh, the, the 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 tower, the mid lane was a little uh, wonky. The, the the shading was really off. And then, you know, very shortly after, we got access to it and everything was fixed. And then even then, you know, the, the day of, the um, some small things like the dirt was kind of off and looked like Minecraft, a lot of people were complaining about. Next day, that was fixed. You know, if those are any kind of small little um, good omens as to what's to come, it seems like they know what they're doing and uh, Metabuff is in a good position right now. So, um, you know, it does feel like we're in the right hands and, I, and I'm very confident what they're doing. All the power to them in that delay, I, I'm, you know, take as long as you need. Yeah, I think it's definitely a good thing. You don't want to rush the game out before it's ready. I mean, the map changes, that's one thing. Actually getting the gaming ability system down and having all these characters interact with each other the way they're supposed to is a whole nother story. And I would rather they get some more testing internally before they release it to the public. One thing, this might be a little controversial, but I kind of hope that when they do release the alpha the first day or first week or whatever, I hope they release it under an NDA. Um, I know that's going to break a lot of streamer and YouTuber hearts with me saying that. And I would <laughs> certainly, of course, want to be creating content day one from Core. But I think they need to keep it under wraps until they have it a little more fine tuned because they're not they're not making core so that streamers and YouTubers can can get a leg up and, and, and get their career started. They're making it for the fans. We need to, you know, realize that and allow them to do what they need to do. So I really think that they should release whenever they do release their alpha, it should be an under under an NDA. Yeah, I, I really do agree with that, um, especially other alphas that, you know, are sometimes released. It's not always the best kind of first presentation of it. And it's unfortunate because that doesn't make the game. We've seen, you know, we, we're both gamers here, Mongoose. We've seen games start off from, you know, bare minimum, you know, almost nothing and really develop into these amazing, amazing worlds that, you know, we are very in love with. And I would really hate for Core to step into that arena and end up getting really pushed rocky start in alpha that would be that would be pretty disappointing so i do agree i think at least if they're going to do an under nda give us a good month or two as the the community figures and you know the players whoever has access to it to give them proper feedback so they know okay this is what we need to fix phase two or phase three of alpha you know then we can start releasing nda for the for the streamers and the community figures and start doing that but i do i do agree i think right away 
um, you know, as much as we're all excited for it, they do need to, I think that an NDA would be uh, good for them. Yeah. Right. Because they, they have no idea what's going to happen. They think they might know right. they can do their own internal testing. But once you get people boots on ground in the servers, playing the game, there's going to be some crazy shit happening that they have no idea what it, what it, what it was. They have no mm-hmm. ability to forecast that. And um, that's what the alpha is for. And I would rather that people see the alpha in a more polished state than to see it before they're able to address those bugs. Right, exactly. And and that's another thing that I've been going on too is from the sounds of it, you know, I, nothing's been totally confirmed. I did ask Opolis and Allo this at one point and uh, neither have given me a direct answer as they so lovingly do to us. Um, uh, I was curious as uh, whether the alpha when it came out if it was going to be similar to like what Epic did when, you know, it just kind of never left alpha, which I don't mind, you know, that I think that's a perfectly fine thing to do to have us grow with the game, you know, go from alpha to beta to, you know, you know whatever the, the normal process is. But um, from what it seems like, it seems like once they give us alpha access, it's kind of just sailing from there, whether it's smooth or choppy, we're going to be on the, we're, you know, we're going to be on the seas of core. Yeah. Um, that That's kind of the general outlook. So I think if that is the case, then yes, we NDA is perfectly fine. You know, as long as it's not going to be out for a week or two. Um, and and that's another thing too about alphas. Um, I think it's going to be good if they are going to do a timed alpha. They need to give us a, a, at least two months to really kind of test things, mess with some different um, additions that they put on. Um, I don't think a week or like you know like a month, I, I, even a month. I don't think is enough time to really really kind of mess with things. Um, you know, so we definitely need a little bit of time with that. But uh, like I was saying, I, it does seem like they are kind of holding off on that idea of once it's released, we're going to have access to it. For those of you who aren't tracking, uh, Opolis is the vice president of Metabuff, well, one of the one of the VPs of Metabuff. So if we say Opolis, that's who we're referring to. And uh, Flores is uh, somebody that helps out with Metabuff. He's, he's on the team. Um, yeah, the... the Getting back to the delayed alpha, they they set that date for the 27th, and that was kind of a little iffy on that, you know, from the beginning when they first released that day, because, mm-hmm. you know, it is a very romantic date. It's the it's one year after Paragon closed. And that seems yeah. like a weird date to set for an alpha, because like like I said, you never know what's going to happen between the time you announce that until the time it ends. And I'm just right. glad they I'm glad they announced it well in advance to give people a little bit of a heads up, you know. I, if they would have just if they would have announced this on the on the 26th or the 27th i would have been a little more devastated but uh giving us a little bit of a heads up i think is the best bet and they did that well yeah yeah they handled that really well and then even though know, even that day you know they were very active with us um I, i'm pretty I'm pretty sure it was that day opolis hopped in my stream me and uh pastor jebediah another community figure uh we were kind of like co-casting one of my streams and um you know, he came in, um, he threw me a host and then he DM'd me. He was like, Hey, if you want me to hop in, I'm, I'm more than happy to. And, you know, we kind of chopped it up and, uh, it was really nice talking to him and, you know, he had a lot of really good insight and, um, you know, he, he gave a lot of good info and, um, you know, you can, you can really feel uh, the love and the passion for what they're doing from all of these people. When you talk to them, um, you know, I, I'm sure you can, you know, you can definitely confirm this too, mongoose, you know, when, when you, you know, when you talk to, to Aloe or when you talk to, to any of them, you know, uh, you, you know, don't want to start dropping names here, but you know, Opolis, Allo, those are the people that I have mainly spoken to. They're they're very much in love with us. They're passionate about their team. They're passionate about what they're doing. And at the end of the day, you know, they always want all of us to remember that they're in the same boat as we are. They loved Cor- uh, Paragon, excuse me. They loved Paragon. They loved the memories they have, um, you know, and they really are doing everything they can to bring that back. And it's all a big labor of love and. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it, they're definitely doing the right thing. They gave us a good amount of time. Um, you know, they did it early enough in the month where, you know, they, they let us know they were active in the community. They were talking to us, answering questions for us. You know, it's not like they, you know, announced the cancellation of it or, you know, the delay of it. And then kind of just went silent. You know, they were there for us and, and talked to us, you know, doing things that not a lot of developers would take their time to do. You know, they already have a busy schedule. They got a lot of stuff going on. And, um, I think it was handled very well in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could have been announced a little earlier. I mean, mm. they they replaced FaZe and Kwong. I think they probably knew at that time that they were going to have to delay the alpha because that <laughs> is not enough time to prep Decker and Feng Mao if, if, if Decker and Feng Mao weren't already being prepped. 
because there's a lot that goes into bringing these heroes to life. Right. So I think they probably knew a little bit, a little before now, but they were kind of they were probably just waiting to uh to kind of ease the blow by releasing the UI updates and some more uh some more map testing keys and stuff like that. By the way, uh I kind of have this is another gripe I kind of have. Mm-hmm. Um I'm sure that there was community uh, members of the community that wanted Decker over Phase. I'm sure there was members of the community community that wanted Fing Mal over Kwong. I don't think that's the real reason that they replaced those heroes. I think those two heroes um along with Revenant who got replaced by Sparrow those three heroes are extremely hard to implement. Um, even Epic couldn't implement them right in a lot of ways, and I think that's probably why they would they got they got pulled in favor of Sparrow, Decker, and Fing Mao. I think that's probably the real reason. I wish they would have just said that, like just come out and say, "Hey, man, these phases just the tether is just too hard to make work in time for mm-hmm. the alpha, so we're just gonna we're just gonna sub sub Decker in." I think I wish they would have done that, but. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm absolutely incorrect. Maybe it was, you know, a, a massive amount of the community complaining because they couldn't have their their Decker booty. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, and you know what? The, you know, I actually didn't realize that um, Quang and Phase were replaced. I knew Revenant was. I guess I just wasn't paying attention enough. I'm gonna... Oblis is going to drop me now, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, yeah, no. And like, you know, thinking about it, I could really see that being an issue, especially even at alpha for any game, having abilities like Quang's where, you know, you have to be in the circle, you know, if it, cause like I remember in Paragon, it was a little iffy. Sometimes if you were on right on the edge of his ring, you'd still get caught, you know, alphas are very kind of notorious for being kind of buggy and just, you know, straightforward and like no crazy animations in them. So like having, a, a character that is, um, you know, anatomically movable as like a Quang throwing a sword and, you know, having the timing down. And then like, like you mentioned, FaZe doing the pull and Revenant with his lock on and all that. Like, I, I do think that could definitely be a lot of work. I could really see how that could uh, mess with an alpha or even just, you know, make an alpha feel weirder than it really should be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's obviously, again, all speculation. Um, but yeah, if if that was something, you know, it'd be nice to kind of get an honest answer from that and be like, hey, this is really what happened, um, you know. But uh, you know, I I I am a firm believer of of the transparency that they're offering us, so I'm going to take them at face value for it. Um, but yeah, definitely going kind of trailing back to what you said, I think around them they knew. I think they kind of had an inkling that it you know it wasn't going to work out, and they were probably just like. Let's just keep busting our asses. Let's see. Let's give ourselves to till, you know, early a- April and see where we are. If we're nowhere close, um, you know, then then we can, you know, then we're going to have to delay yeah, it. But um, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah I-, I think they tried giving themselves as much time as possible. And you know what, too? You know, they're doing a huge service for all of us. And they put a really, really short deadline on themselves, kind of making, you know, a game from the ground up for you know, for lack of better terms, amateurs, you know, making a game from the ground up that a AAA company was making, you know, Epic Games is not a small company. Um, you know, taking, you know, filling in those shoes is definitely a big thing to do. So um, I think they might have bit off a little more than they chew, but I'm glad they, they realized that and they're taking the proper time and, um, you know, they're doing the right thing now. Taking a little responsibility, yeah. And uh, they kind of eased the blow with the uh, with the UI updates. Um, right. Go get, get into talking about those, that UI update video. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, the UI video was, uh, it was really impressive. Um, Opolis did mention a lot, um, most of that it was pretty much just kind of like, um, like CGI video, but it was just like a, like an idea of what they're going to have because he said pretty much that's what they're having. So that, it, it looked really, really nice. I loved the menu. I loved how the main menu looked, how it had like the store. Um, like it, I think there was like a, like a clan like option in there too. Yeah. Um, you know, it, yeah, alliances. Yep, that's what it was. Yep, and then they had um the um the like the footnotes for the updates and stuff like that. I can't remember the name of that right at the moment. Uh, what's they had a lot. Yeah, what's new? Yep, yep, stuff like that. Um, you know, they had a lot of really cool stuff on there. And then I loved when they showed the actual game modes. You know, they had two separate sections or three separate sections. Really, they had um the competitive, the um um casual, ranked, and I think they had like a like a, a, a um an all like um trainings kind of based one. 
But um, and, you know, and then they even already showed off options for um other game modes, which was one of the ones in the ranked tab, I think it was. Which is, I'm assuming, you know, they, you know, they've talked about wanting to do like um, you know, you know, different types of games like you see in like Smite or League of Legends and stuff like that in Dota. Um, you know, right. they want to have different game modes, different, you know, eventually different maps and maybe, um, you know, to, to kind of fit those game modes. So I like that they're already, you know, kind of following through with that. You know, they're not just kind of talking out of their ass and saying, yeah, yeah, you know, we're going to do different game modes and like they're never going to show it. But, you know, it's cool that they're kind of owning up to that and they did kind of confirm themselves. So, you know, they kind of pointed the gun at their foot. So we're going to see if they're going to, you know, if it's going to fire because, you know, <laughs> now that's kind of confirming, you know, now they got to do other game modes, you know. I think a lot of those modes, like you had the you had the casual, you had the rank. I think the other mode was team mode, like five like five players queuing up at once. Because I know yep. they I know they don't want four stacks. From from what I've heard, they don't want four stacks because when you have a four stack, it's always that that fifth person's problem. You know what I mean? Like yep. nobody yeah, yeah, ever wants to always... blame their friends, so it's always <laughs> it's always the the random guy's fault. Like this. Yep freaking rando over yep. here doing this and that they might be playing a perfectly good game but if they're yep. not on your team it's their fault they, they, <laughs> and they want to avoid that which i think is a great thing yeah yeah and i even like the extra little incentive again i don't know none of that is 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 set in stone but um if you if you looked at it if you remembered it, it had the team the, the team based mode and then they had the solo queuing the solo queuing actually would have you know, from the video, if that was a real thing, you know, up right now, you'd get an extra little XP bonus, like an extra 10% yeah. or something, uh, you know, kind of giving you that incentive to play that one, which is really cool. I, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's very nice. Uh, they did have the Proving Grounds up there, too, which yep. I would assume would be some, because they had um, Solo Queue versus AI, uh, Co-op versus AI, and then Proving Grounds. I would assume Proving Grounds would be some sort of testing map where you could go in by yourself and test things out. Which um, I know happens to be um, much more difficult than you may imagine, because mm -hmm. when you have servers set up and everybody's playing on a server, you've got that server that you're paying for. You're paying for that server to host ten players in a five-on-five match. Mm -hmm. If one person goes into that proving grounds, that's a separate server. Now you're paying the same amount that you're paying for that other server that's hosting ten people. You're paying that same amount for one person to play on that server by themselves in that proving ground. Unless they've come up with a way around that, that may not be the most cost efficient thing, and we may not see those proving grounds until they're a little more financially stable. Hopefully they will be financially stable. I'm, that's another thing I want to bring up. I'm going, I'm, I'm going off the rails here. I'm going off topic. <laughs> another thing I want to bring up is people say, you know, Paragon didn't make enough money for Epic to stay in business. What makes Metabuff think that Core can make enough money for them? Well, Core doesn't need to make nearly as much money as Paragon was for Epic because Epic has investors that they have to, a uh, Tennyson, that they have to answer to. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in quarterly reports, MetaBuff doesn't have that. MetaBuff doesn't have the huge team that Epic has. And so they don't have to pay as many people as much money. So they can, Core can survive with a much smaller player base and much smaller income than paragon did so i think that's uh that's an important thing to put out out there because a lot of people worry about that and i don't think it's as big of a concern as you may believe now what the hell yeah. was i talking about proving grounds how did i go from yeah, proving, proving grounds <laughs> uh i think i think you connected that because of the the cost of servers right yeah <laughs> right right <laughs> you got a lot in your mind mongoose <laughs> oh man but the uh, one other thing, very interesting detail I saw in the uh, character selection screen where you could pick your own skin or whatever, on the um, left or right-hand side, uh, I guess it would be Gide my left, Gideon's right, was <laughs> core <laughs> abilities. That was something they brought up in the proof of concept, was having core abilities, which would function similar to relics in other games, like relics and smite. So mm. it would be something that you would pick at the beginning of the match before you go in. And it would be like a uh, very high cooldown, um, high impact ability that was uh, specific to you. So it does look like they still kind of plan to have those because it was in the UI. Um, it right. didn't look like it was selectable, so it definitely won't be in the alpha. But that is something maybe we can look forward to if, if relics are something you enjoy. I, not, I know not everybody enjoys that style of play, but 
pretty cool stuff. I'm glad to see that uh, that some of the stuff from the proof of concept is making it into the final product, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is kind of uh, segueing our way into our main topic. But, you know, I, like you mentioned earlier, all the um, every you know, everything I've been doing on my stream, kind of getting suggestions from the community. I hear that almost every time I stream, you know, every every like I'll say like 10, 15, 20 minutes. I get someone mentioning the rune system from Smite and stuff like that. And uh, um, so it's cool that, that they do have that. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, so me and and pastor brought that up to Opolis and I, I think it like the way they want to do that. It's kind of like their answer to, do you remember in the old um, original uh, Paragon builds, you could pick your OP buff card. Yeah. I, I so I'm pretty sure that that's going to be that kind of that version. Like it's going to be something similar to that. Like like you're saying, like a high cooldown, high um, kind of damage or high intensity ability or something. You know, some type of extra thing that you're going to be getting, which is going to be a, a really cool thing. You know, and, and like you're saying, you know, that's something that they had in the proof of concept. And you know, they are obviously realizing that there are other mobas out there that are successful, and they're kind of I think looking at what makes them successful. And you know, so far that's kind of that. If I had to say something that is the most popular that's mentioned on my stream so far, it's definitely that people are always mentioning the rune system and how that kind of adds a lot of diversity to it so if they're adding that and not only just adding that but also adding the ability to kind of customize it and choose your own i think that's really that's a really really fucking cool idea well if they're going to if they function similar to the prime cards that they would only be active during the prime buff right did did they say that the core abilities would function like prime cards or was that just I think that's something me and Pastor were just speculating. I know we okay, asked okay. Opolis. I can't. I, I I'm gonna go back and I'll listen to my to my stream when I get a chance, and um at my VOD. And I, I know Opolis did answer that for us. I don't want to say yes or no because I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna I gotcha. I, I'm uh, I'm gonna say right now. Me and Pastor were speculating about that. We did bring that up to him, and I I can't remember perfectly what he said. You know, I don't want to put anything in in Opolis's mouth and you know kind of uh, put anything out there without uh, it being true. <laughs> Strongly resisting the urge to make a comment about putting something in Opolis's mouth. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, move on to the map test. <laughs> I think, unless you had anything else you wanted to talk about for the uh, UI updates. Um, no. I mean, the only other thing that I saw in there that I'm like, oh, two things actually. When you watch the UI update, um, it showed all their stats. Obviously, none of that is set in stone. But one thing I noticed is there's no mention of character movement speed. I loved Mongoose. I hated the idea that as Twin Blast or Murdoch, especially Murdoch, who didn't have any, you know, dashes or anything like Twin Blast did, you know, he had that little bit of a boost. Um, I hated the idea that I could bop away a Kalari or a Chimera or someone and they could just walk faster than me. So <laughs> I, I, I love that everyone's going to be on an equal playing ground. If, you know, if there's cards and stuff that are going to mess with movement speed, Whatever, you know, I trust MetaBuff. You know, I'm sure they'll talk to us about ideas and stuff like that. You know, they're very good about that, about being open, and, you know, with the community and, and, and us as community figures. But, um, you know, if that's something they want to add in as cards, cool. But off the bat, I love that everybody has the same movement speed. It's not even mentioned in the game. I, I love that. And then on top of that, we're also seeing a really cool Gideon skin that has never been uh, shown before. That the, was the in tough the yet. One? The tough one. I think that is such a cool, like, a battle mage Gideon skin. Like, I saw that. I didn't notice it at first, and Pastor made me rewind and look at it. And he was like, dude, that I've never seen the skin. And I was like, oh my god, dude, you're right. Yo, what, and a, I, what did Gideon look like Tyrion Lannister, though? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh my god. <laughs> did, he, did he look a little off? Did Gideon look a little off to you? He looked a little off to me. He he did. I I think that was because of of the textures and the shading and stuff like that wasn't perfect because they just kind of put the character model in there from like you know from what the, the um the assets they got from Epic. Obviously, you know that that was just a, a like a video a proof of concept kind of video yeah. like that. So I don't think they put too much effort into shading the characters just for that. So, but he he you know they did look a little funky. And me and Pastor, <laughs> yeah. me and Pastor were very much stressing that those are just not shaded properly that's not going to be the characters in game <laughs> uh, one um, thing I, another thing i noticed is when they were uh yep. they were choosing their heroes there was no mirror matches once once the enemy team picked a hero it was grayed out for your team so I yeah assume... yeah I, I did see that and then also i loved the kind of like for honor kind of 
uh, teams looking at each other, kind of charging at each other. I thought yeah. that, that was fun too. Um, you know, this is all stuff that they could literally never make in the game, but I loved seeing it. The UI video, I think, was really great. It was good seeing, finally hearing something too. Um, you know, on top of us waiting for the alpha before it was delayed, it kind of felt like meta buff was a little silent. Um, and you know, I did voice my opinion uh, to a couple of my friends that are that I'm friendly with on the meta buff team. That you know, I, I was just like, you know, kind of like, you know, am I just not hearing anything, or like, have you guys not announced anything? And um, you know, so it was nice to finally get a, a good piece of you know information. Really see not just like, hey, we're doing core. Here's a proof of concept. Like a real first step. Like you know, we have the launcher now. We saw a real, like you know a rough draft of what the menu is going to look like. What we can expect. Um, all that look. It looks really really cool. I'm 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 loving it so far. You're gonna hate me for this, but I remember when you were talking about that in the uh, Discord, and mm -hmm. I was actually sitting on the map like playing. <laughs> <laughs> the like they just, I was like, man, they just gonna be so happy. <laughs> oh man, so I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, that, that's okay. I, I I get it now, and I'm up to date with everything. And uh, yeah, I, I've had a few conversations. I'm up to date. I, I know what's going on, so I understand why. And uh, yeah, no, that 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 was funny though. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the map, let's talk about the new map test because I know you have been playing around on it and streaming it i've been uh messing around with it a bit myself so uh let's talk about our impressions of this new map what do you think hate it it's horrible i'm just kidding i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> um no i i love the map i there there are things if i personally was making the map i am have zero skill in it and it would just be aesthetic obviously everything that they have you know um so you have the you know they you have sylphan doing the numbers and their um Blood Mortius, he's working with them, right? Yeah. Um. He, he's he's you know they're, they're testing kind of like rotation times and you know those are people that you really want on it you know so they have everything down everything in there everything that's in there is in there for a reason obviously everything can be tweaked the I, I love the how the map looks I love how it feels and plays um I love how it has a similar it has the only remnants of monolith that we're getting is the general shape of the map which I'm okay with. Um, I like how it's much bigger than Monolith. Um, it feels more, it feels more open, but also there, when it needs to be tight, it feels tight. Um, you know, it's very clear where they want team fights, where they don't want fights. Uh, I really like the freedom that, the, that they're kind of implementing in it. I like how you're being rewarded for being a, a vertically uh, mobile character, um, but you're also not being, not necessarily as punished. For being a non-vertical character, um, I do think that might be a little, there might be some balancing they got to work out in there. But overall, uh, I'm I'm generally really pleased with the map. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. I love the two different sides. I love how they kept that dawn dusk kind of thing that um, epic initially uh, or at the end, not initially Jesus um, that they kind of dropped in there. Yeah, it, it ov overall it's really nice. I I like it. Um, you know, there's some things that I would want to change. There are some things that we've noticed in my streams that could be updated, but that's obviously little kind of aesthetic visuals that aren't as important um for a functioning game. So, what I wanted to talk about with the map is some of as far as the things that I like. There were some things that I disliked, but the things that I like were some really highly technical things that they worked in, especially okay. with sound. You could definitely you could tell when you entered the jungle because you mm. could start hearing the birds twerp, uh, the tw twerping, the bird twer twerping, the, the the birds twerking in the in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love when birds twerk, but uh, <laughs> I mean that was really cool. And not only that, but there was a Doppler effect to it. Like it felt like like the sound changed as you moved around. And I don't know, did you find the minion that was making the the sounds when you were jumping around on the map? Oh yeah, I found like all like all fucking twelve of them. <laughs> yeah. There there's one there's like two in each jungle. And then just to jump on that too, I'll let you get back to it. But if you I don't know if you were like were really noticing, but it, it really there was a lot of dynamic in the in the sound. Like as soon as you walk in the jungle, you know, it was kinda quiet at first and it got really loud and then like you hear the whooping of the like the like the raven and everything. And then like in the lanes, you could hear like the water and stuff like that, like kinda running from like the, the river in the center and like where they were kind of trailing on the edges. Like there was a there was a real like variety and noise and like you couldn't hear the the jungle noise from the lane and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's just something small I want to throw in there too. But go ahead and continue. Yeah, I mean, and that's something they plan to capitalize on overall. They uh, they want to make the sounds in the jungle sound different. Like 
A howitzer explosion in the jungle will sound a little more muffled than a howitzer explosion in lane. I think that's really cool of them. And it's I like gonna, that. And it's going to let you sound whore a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's a big thing like Call of Duty and first person shooters is sound whoring where you you know you listen for footsteps. And that's something you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to hide behind a wall, hear those footsteps coming closer and closer, and know when to, to jump out and engage an enemy and know you know how many enemies are coming, which is something we really didn't have in Paragon, and they're going to implement that in core. And I think that is absolutely phenomenal, just an outstanding idea. The The overall appearance of the map, I thought, was absolutely beautiful. It was a gorgeous map, mm-hmm. and... uh they had a lot of verticality, like you said. Um, you know, that verticality we got to take full advantage on with Kalari, but not everyone is as uh, vertically inclined as Kalari. So a lot of people were saying that, you know, Kalari has an unfair advantage. Kalari's supposed to have a vertical <laughs> unfair advantage right? <laughs> when it comes to Paragon. She did in, in Monolith, she did in Legacy, and that's there for heroes like that to capitalize on. But, yeah, know, because not to mention she has, you know, like maybe a max of like 60 health. So, yeah, she, you want her to get away better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and really quickly on that, too, I, whenever people were saying that, I would point out, I'm like, like you guys all know how high Greystone could jump. Like right. every almost every window, there might be excluding like one or two spots where only like Kalari and maybe Wukong can get through. But almost every window and every th- like every like fog wall up top, a Feng Mao, um, a a a Greystone, um, a Chimera. Mm-hmm. If someone was up there, a Gideon. Like everybody has like who has the mobility can take advantage of those. But there were a couple extra ones that yes, Lari and like a Wukong can take more advantage of because they're sacrificing a lot more on other things like health. So it is completely understandable for them to have those extra advantages. But once I kind of pointed that out, it made a lot more sense to people that, you know, okay, this isn't just for Kalari. And uh, the other thing, too, is just because a hero doesn't have verticality doesn't make them useless. Crunch didn't have any verticality whatsoever, yet he was an enjoyable character that was fun to play and was an effective character on the battlefield in um, Monolith. And, you know, he didn't have any verticality and he, he did just just as well. It's going to be the same for core. Just because your hero doesn't have the same vertical movement as some of the other characters doesn't mean they're going to be useless. They're just going to be played a little different and have some different strengths. So a lot of people are very worried about that. I don't think you really need to be all that concerned. Um, we really need to see some gameplay, though. We really need to be able to test this map in a PvP environment where we're actually playing against people to make these decisions. And I'm sure once that happens, there will be some more changes to the map. And if it is does end up to where the heroes with, you know, greater vertical movement abilities can absolutely dominate the battlefield, then they will probably change some things about the map or change some things about those heroes' verticality. So mm-hmm. not something to worry about too much, I don't think. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, that people always need to remember is that what we're seeing right now is going to go through a lot of changing, a lot of testing, a lot of critiquing, especially from, you know, me and your me, yourself and the other community figures, because realistically of our position, we will be probably playing the game sooner than other people to give MetaBuff those accurate that accurate feedback without all the backlash from a majority of the community. You know what I mean? So right. like a lot of the stuff that you know, it's good that me and you were here, and that's the thing I always stress out to my to my uh, viewers is Yes, any ideas you can have, feel free to post it in the community Discord. It's a great place to put it. But every developer in, uh, that's on MetaBuff is not going to have every second to go in there. And every, but there are so many people in those in those in those in that Discord talking at different times. Your idea might get lost. Feel free to dump your ideas on Mongoose, on myself, on Britic, on you know Ryan Red, on you know on, on another notch. Any of us that are streaming, if you're in our Discords, if you're in our streams, let us know things that you like, you don't like, things that you're worried about, because we can either let you know what the answer is, or we can pass it along to, to the right person without it seeming like backlash and unnecessary hatred from the, the community. And, you know, because the last thing, that's the last thing MetaBuff needs. Right. Um, but yeah, but I'll, I'll, everything that, that you guys are seeing right now, you know, this map could be a, 100% different 
from the actual release of the game. You know what I mean? Obviously, that might not be the case, but um, you know that that is a potential that does happen in games. The, like the map could be completely different from the final product. I'd like. Let me get into some some of the things I didn't like. I do not like solo lane at all. Um, solo mm-hmm. lane, the way it's set up now, if harvesters work the same way they did in Paragon, and there's no guarantee of that, but if they did, then solo lane is definitely going to be dominated by casters because a melee hero would not have a chance in that lane because there's there's the lip that the caster the uh the raised platform that the caster can stand on and just kind of ping that solo laner out of lane and you know an aggressive caster will always be able to push a mid laner back maybe not uh, i mean a, a melee hero back maybe not kill them but push them back under their tower which would give them ample opportunity to plant that harvester if they wanted to and then give their team an economy bonus and uh yeah i really didn't like that i hope that gets changed a bit and the other thing it's that harvester's all the way away from the jungle so that caster who pushes that melee hero back also really doesn't have to worry about getting ganked by the jungler cuz the jungler has to run all the way across mm. the lane in order to get them unless they use a movement ability and if they use a movement ability then they don't have that to catch up to the caster if they just you know peace out run away so i right. do hope that gets changed um for 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 one thing but again without being being able to play actual people in the map i really don't know right and to throw another another viewpoint on this this is actually something that we spent a uh, probably like a, a good day talking about on my stream um there was a few things that people brought up a lot of people were they brought up that same concern like you know what if a uh, you know a caster could easily take that what we mentioned was first of all that main ring that's on the 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 harvester if they could program it where you have to be in the ring for it to even be active for any range person to even get close enough for that to matter. Yes, they can poke them, but if they're close enough to poke, they're most likely close enough for a Greystone or a Fang Mao or a Quang to jump, tether, teleport to, and really deal up, deal up some damage. As strong as, as Gideon can be, you know, a, a, a beefed up Fang Mao can really fuck with that. You know what I mean? Um, so, so that that was one thing. The other thing was even make, you know, if they were going to do that kind of ring where you had to be in it to have it work, make that even tighter. The third thing that somebody mentioned too was even just doing like we had in Legacy, push it off to the side so that it it's not a chore for the solo laner. It's an option. If you don't want to worry about it, fine. But if you, but you'll have to defend it if the other person wants to go and take it. So, you know, a, a Fang Mao versus an Aurora or a Quang versus, a, you know, a Fang Mao, whatever, however it's going to be set up. You know, if, if that Aurora wants to go there and try to get there for the team, you don't have to really spend time worrying about it, but you want to stop them from getting it. So it does become another, uh, another task. Um, but you know, if both people are going to leave it alone, it's not right there. Cause there was a lot of times in legacy where that solo harvester would never get used because it was far off the side. People were worried about fighting, but mainly I saw people go back there to, to recall, to hide and recall. Um, you know, so I, I feel like it could fall into that same category where, you know, it could help out the team, but it could also just kind of be there as, uh, you know, another strategic place to hang out. Um, you know, so I, I, I think there's some definite things that they could do there. What you're saying does make sense. I didn't think about that. Having the jungler kind of move in, um, from there, it is very far from the jungle. Um, but I think making it more optional by having it pushed to the side is a lot better than kind of having it shoved in the solo laner's face, you know, along with worrying about gangs, rotations from mid and, you know, the actual fighting of the two solo laners, having that right there is a lot of pressure. So I think having it off to the side would be a really good option. Well, if it's the only neutral harvester, that's not mm-hmm. optional. That is something that you are going to fight tooth and nail for because it mm-hmm. gives an economy bonus to your entire team. So right. even if you push it off to the side, there's always going to be a fight for it. And right. if you're a melee hero, melee heroes don't have as much lane clear as, say, a Gideon or a Fey or a uh, Belica. If they go to set that harvester up, Belic is just going to jam a wave underneath your tower, and then your tower is going to go down. And when you go back right. to try and clear those minions, she's just going to take that harvester back. So right, right, even right, if you right. do that, it's still going to massively favor um, casters. And the other thing you were talking about, I know Window was saying that as well. Have it be a, like a domination thing, like you have to be standing within the ring to activate the uh, the harvester. Well, if you do that, if you're standing in the ring to activate the harvester. If you're a melee hero, you're not doing anything to the minions, whereas a caster can. 
you know, can still mm-hmm. throw abilities down on that minion wave. So mm-hmm. it, any way you slice it, it benefits casters. Um, it just cha- right. changing it up just kind of changes the way it benefits casters. Really, right, right. Now let me throw this one thing at you. So you know, if if so, under the assumption that you know the one team is following, you know how Meta Buff is setting up the game because realistically they want that to be two fighters like a Fang Mao, a Quang, a Greystone, those kind of characters that lane specifically for them. Um, if if somebody did decide to switch it up and pick a Fey or a Bellica, um. In your scenario, are they are they dropping mid lane and now is a fighter going to be going to mid lane or is that team going to have two casters? Because I think two casters, yeah, r- right. So I, I I personally think that could end up hurting the team in the long run because uh, uh, you know uh, there's plenty of fighters that can out damage a caster late much later on in the game. So yes, early on that might make problems. And then there are also a lot of ways that angling the the harvester because like if you remember on Legacy you did kind of have to be in view of the Harvester. Like, you had to be in that side lane to actually be able to, you know, drop a Gideon Rock. or ha- you, There was an angle you had to get in there, which would give the melee fighter some chance to kind of, le- you know, kind of teleport to you and, and, and give that um, that caster a fight. Uh, again, I get what you're saying. You know, I'm, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, obviously. Yeah, yeah no worries. And, 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 and give another viewpoint on here. I mean, you know, I'm not super in love with the Harvester. I think it's a cool idea. Um, you know, but I, you know, looking at this from every angle, I think there is a way it can be done. What you're saying does make a lot of sense. Having it completely out in the open like that does make it much more caster favored. And I think it's already kind of just throwing that, um, that meta, that meta buff, uh, wants of having fighters, casters in the middle and then the, um, um, carry support on the, uh, side lane on the other, on the other end. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something that they'll definitely have to change, and I, and I think right. they probably will. Um, another mm. thing I didn't like was um, the mid lane. When I first played the map, I liked the mid lane better than when they made the revisions. Mm-hmm. Um, they had that that cliff wall that faces each other. I think that should be offset, so it would be mirrored. Right now, it's mm-hmm. like you know the walls are directly facing each other. I think the wall should be on one side for one lane, and the other like side diagonally. For yeah, diagonally. I was trying to think of okay. the best way to say that. I think yeah, you, yeah. I think you got it. I think you get my drift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I do. Um, <clears throat> see, I'm on both ends of that. I like it being direct, only because one side of the jungle is always going to be favored for a rotation than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, if if coming, you're going to want to focus on getting the red buff and then rotating. If it's diagonal. <clears throat> one one lane is always going to be closer to the red buff on that platform, which is going to open up for more opportunity for um, the jungler to rotate in and kind of sneak up on them. Whereas if they're both on the kind of more neutral side, the, the blue buff side, like they are now, I think it gives the mid laner, it gives one of the mid laners um, more equal chance. Because again, you know, if, if I'm on the, I think it's right now, it's on the, the Dawn side. Um, or let's just say the dawn side, uh, you know, is on the the left side of the tower. Um, you know, closer to right. It's it's a lot more likely someone's going to come from the right side, you know, right from under you and do a chimera jump or a graystone jump and get right up there with that buff, or come from those stairs right above with it. Yeah. Um, but if you're on the further, if you're on the far side, if both teams are on the far side, it'd be a little unfair if I was on dawn side and I was getting bullied by the red buff side and um the you know the opposite dusk laner was you know only had to worry about the blue buff and had more vision of where the red buff side could come from that's my only gripe about having a diagonal i think if you're going to do it have a platform on both sides look kind of similar to how monolith did it um but i i personally kind of like that um if they are going to do it on diagonal i I, th- I i think you need to have it on both sides only because it does make it a little unfair for the person that's closer to the red buff that's a good point uh, another thing people uh, saw a lot of people talk about, they didn't like the design of the Or Prime dunk pit in the mm. duo lane. Um, mm-hmm. I really don't know what to think about that because we kind of look every, at everything through the lens of this is how it was in Paragon. This is a Paragon. This is core. And, and the Prime dunk, you know, just because their Prime dunk pit doesn't look like the one that we had in Paragon doesn't mean it's not going to work. Um it does look weird to me, but I think that's just me projecting Paragon onto Core. So I don't know. That might be the problem for other people as well. I don't. I really don't know. What do you think of the Prime right. Dunk Pit? I I loved I loved Prime Dunking. 
I didn't like how long it would make a game. I didn't like some of the options that they added to it. Um, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna send you on Discord so you can look at this. One of my viewers actually drew something out that would be cool, kind of a fix for it because they were in my stream. Um, Visioned actually, he's one of the mods for um, uh, the the community Discord. He kind of revamped it and made it so it's a more of a staircase, a little more open, less of a wall. Um, but I personally like dunking. I thought it was it was a fun new mini game that incorporated into the game. You know, the whole team's going on, every kind of going back and forth. You know, everybody, both teams, kind of equivocally reach this point in the game where they're like, okay, I'm ready for Or Prime. They're ready for Or Prime. Let's go have a crazy team fight, and the winner is going to have to scrounge up for Or Prime. And in in this version of Core is you ha you cannot fight in the Orb Prime pit. I hated that about Monolith. There was too much room to fight. You could have an entire team fight fight right in front of um, Orb Prime because there was so much space. In Core's current map right now, it's a very tough... Like, once you enter the Orb Prime pit, you're in Orb Prime. There is no way to fight around him without hitting him and getting him involved on the team fights. Which is devastating for either team that he's attacking. Um... So I like the idea of, okay, let's wipe the team or wipe most of them. Let's go in there, get prime, and let's bring it over to the dunk spot. And it's going to give us that boost that we need because right now both teams are even. You know, we're good. You know, my team's good. Your team, Mongoose, is good. We're both good team captains. Our characters are fed where they need to be. Um, you know, they're, everyone's ready to go. So if we're evenly matched, that's a match that could last forever. Giving you that or prime buff and that dunk adds... Uh, the risk of your entire team dying right away, and it also adds on now the other team is stronger than us, regardless of both of our set skills. They are, you know, statistically now stronger than us because of that buff. So the game could, you know, progress a lot quicker. There are a lot of people that argue that it did extend the games, which it definitely did. Adding on the um, the Harvester revivals or all the Harvester revivals, I think, is a mistake. Um, you know, so there's definitely some, some kind of uh, revisions and stuff that they have to look through to really make it work. Um, but I think prime dunking is something that could be really fun. And, um, it would also be cool to kind of have it optional. Um, you know, in competitive, it's not really needed, uh, cause you know, that could extend the game a lot. Um, I think competitive games should just be, you know, talent against talent, skill against skill. Um, you know, whatever, you know, whatever item set is better than the other one. Um, I think that's something that's interesting and, you know, having dunking for, you know, have a specific mode for that has the, the kind of mini games, quote unquote, you know, or add that in casual. Um, but I do like it. And I, I hope that meta buff can find a way to really make it work. As long as they don't allow you to resurrect your inhibitors. <laughs> oh my God. I hated that. Yeah. So bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and even then, there's ways that they could allow you to revive the the inhibitor, but make it very limited. You know, give give your inhibitor like 25% health, or make it the inhibitor revival for like a minute. Like, give you a minute of time to kind of set up your lanes and push. You know, give you that little bit of extra time, and then after a minute, you know, you lose your inhibitor instead of taking the the you know the the powerful buff from or prime for your team. You guys get a you know a minute or two of, of inhibitor time. Um, you know, there, there's things that I think they could implement that could help, but I, I do agree. I think the inhibitor revival is a very risky thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the, the or prime dunking mechanic back mm -hmm. in legacy as well. Um, mm -hmm. I actually felt the opposite of, of, of how you felt about the actual or prime pit itself. I think it's more open than the one we had in monolith. Um, there's a lot of area in that circle, and then there's a lot of area just outside that circle in order to, to, to fight in. So that's going to be, I don't know, I think it's going to make for some pretty damn good team fights. Yeah, no, re re regardless, yeah, re re I, I think it's going to, it's, it, it's, it's set up where around Prime Pit is, you know, there's a lot of space to fight. What I mean is like once you enter, you know, the, the, the Prime Pit, it's it's pretty tight around around him. Like you couldn't do a steel ult without hitting him. You couldn't do a Gideon ultimate without hitting him while you're inside of the pit. Whereas on Monolith, you had that entire kind of like slab of stone that was you know that was in front of him, and then you kind of entered his initial little pit. Um, I, I I think it's a little it's a little more tight. Like once you go in and you start, you have to start. You know what I mean? Like you have to finish that. Do you mean like before he's pulled or after he's pulled? Because once you pull him, you can pull him to a wall. Right. No, no, that, that's what I mean. Like, like once, once, uh, prime is started, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's tight enough where like you, you gotta, you gotta commit and finish it. Yeah. And I definitely don't want to see, um, 
people being able to solo prime like mm -hmm. super early in the game like you used to be able to in uh, Paragon because that that doesn't ever feel good for anybody. Right, right, yeah. I, I like I used to. I'm guilty. I used to do that all the time as Chimera. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I I enjoyed doing it for the fact that it was broken, but I'm glad that they took it out because it was not necessary for me to be able to do that alone. And fight off, a, you know, another person trying to stop me. That that was that's not a good thing. My feelings um, on that is, whenever you can do something like that with a hero, it makes you feel like you're playing a powerful hero. It doesn't make you feel like you did something incredibly right. smart. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't right, make right, you feel right. like a good player. It makes you feel like you played a good hero. Right. Exactly. And that's not something I want. I wanna. I wanna feel like okay. You know, I'm not good with. You know chimera because he's broken i'm good with chimera because i know how to play him i know when to yeah. beat up my attacks i know when to do my my ultimate i know when to jump and follow through and um you know it, it's that is much more an appealing feeling than like you said than than you know i'm good with this character because he's he's busted i think that's probably why i was always drawn to the less played heroes like i had mastery on richter fey crunch shinbi mm -hmm. Like, I know a lot of people ended up playing Shimby, but when Shimby first dropped, like, people would get mad when I picked her. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, she was in a bad place when she first came out, and, and, uh, and, and then, the, like, closer to the end, she was, like, a huge meta pick, but yeah, I, I, I remember that, yeah. When yeah. she first dropped, I mean, but that was, that was the fun for me, for people to get mad at me for picking Shimby, and then for me to shit on the enemy team all yep. game long with Shimby, and then they'd be like, okay, maybe Shimby's not so bad. <laughs> yeah and i was kind of in the same boat with you i actually made a compilation video a while ago and i put it on the uh on the facebook group for for paragon back when it was up and i just it was just all richter i, I jungle richter people would get fucked pissed at me they would dodge and <laughs> um but i got in and 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 mongoose i was so, like i was really good like i, I had perfect ganking like as soon as mid laner tried running like no 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 like you come back here and fight me in the mid laner you already you like Gideon. You used your teleport. I'm gonna pull you right back, and you're it's over. There's a like, reason you know, uh, Richter had that assassin tag, man. He was uh... right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, people <laughs> didn't know how to use him, and you know they just thought because he was big, he couldn't run around the jungle. And boy, were they wrong when they saw me. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I. I. I enjoy that feeling. Uh, going back to that. Yeah. That I, I don't want to be able to take down or prime by myself. Uh. You know. Unless. It goes back to that, you know, I built the perfect set for Chimera and I can just barely take Chimera, uh, you know, take an Aura Prime or take on like two people by myself because not only am I good enough to use his abilities, I've mastered, I think, mastered my build for how I play Chimera. You know, that's kind of different than yeah, that's just true. having having an all damage build for Chimera and an all speed build, which is pretty much how you'd only build him in, in, uh, in, in Legacy. Um, you know, so the, it it is a slightly double edged sword. One of those edges is a little more blunt than the other. Um, but it, you know, it it, do, it does come like that, yeah. Well, all right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for the first episode of the Corecast. We actually had some other topics that we wanted to get to, but we were having such a great time talking about the news and updates that we just kept on going. We don't we want to keep this limited to maybe about an hour, hour and a half. So, uh. We'll uh, save those topics for next time. Next time, be sure to tune in for next time. Uh, Nato, you got anything you want to say to the folks before we go? Um, I nothing really. I mean, you know, pay attention to the to the community figures that you guys follow. Um, you know, make sure you guys are voicing your opinions and um, let's not let's not put pressure on Meta Buff any more than they need. I'm sure they're beating themselves up about the delay. <laughs> There's no need to get bashed from us. Um, you know, and and what I can say is from reading everything and everybody's responses, everyone's been great about it. So um, I just say, let's be patient, you guys, and let's really enjoy the trip because once it's here, it's going to be here and we're not going to be able to stop. So let's enjoy this, the, the calm before the storm. Calm before the storm. I love it. All right, folks, we are going to be out of here. We will see you later.